Greetings, everyone. Retro Zoltan here. I have in front of you an Ambernick RG351M. This was loaned to me by my friend Joe in the special thanks section of the credits. Still, you'll see a Joe Chaotic. That's him. Joe, thank you very much. Here it is. Here's the box. Very professional. Very nice. Nothing too much, but, you know, let's open it up. Um, this impressed me the first time I saw it. Um, it was the first time I saw, like, a custom padding. It's cool. It's cool. I like it. I think it's um, it's a nice little foam thing. Typical uh, charging cable. So this is a USB-C uh, charging. So this comes with a nice little cable to, to help you out if you don't have one already. And instructions. Um, I went through these briefly. It mostly is talking about something called Disk Genius, which... Um, I believe was on the original software of this. So that's it for the box. Nothing, nothing too exciting. And here it is. I was very impressed the first time I looked at this. It's just right away, you can feel the quality of it. It's, it's a good heavy metal feeling. Heavy metal! <laughs> just feels it's quality all over. It reminds me of the first time I held a PSP. You just felt like you're holding something expensive, you know. Uh, it's just it, you could feel the quality, the weight. It's it's heavy, but it's not. It's a good heavy. It's not something that's gonna like tire your arms out after a while. Everything about this is like, all the things that I like to see around here. You have dual analog sticks, which of course everybody loves. They feel good, and they're also buttons. You can push them down. They have the old D-pad which is my favorite. You also have the regular buttons, the four buttons, which is good. Start, select, you have your L1s, L2s, and technically these that I like so much are L3s. Yeah, so we got the two OTG ports, which is nice. You won't need it for wireless because wireless is built in, but you might need it for other things. You also have the one of the OTG ports. OTG ports is for charging. So you get that. You get the headphones. Everyone looks for that. My favorite, a dial for volume. This is key to me. I love having a vo I'm a I'm a volume freak. I'm always adjusting volume like crazy. So this is good because some games are louder than others. Some games are more obnoxious. And just an on-off switch. Very simple. You got your SD card, which of course is easy to get to, and reset. This reset is only for emergencies in case you get locked in a game. You really don't want to be pushing it all the time. It's only if you're stuck. And you have your speakers coming out of the bottom, which I also love. So everything about this thing, um, even the back has some little cushions back here to make it nice. Uh, when you're holding it. So the specs of this is that it has a 3.5 inch screen. It has a uh, CPU that is a RK3326 quad core, 1.5 gigahertz. It's got a GPU, a Mali 31 MP2. It's got um, uh, one gig of DDR3L. My friend Joe, uh, who, who likes to uh, 3D print things, also has made something to hold this which makes it even more comfortable it's already comfortable enough as it is but it's it feels really really good it almost it reminds me of holding a Nintendo switch controller i would say it's impressive i, I do like this thing he printed that specifically from thingiverse i believe i'll share a link here it's pretty cool that the that there is a thing out there just for these seriously this is awesome if you want more information on this just ask me i'll, I'll try to give as much information as i can in the description if you need one or whatever just let me know I'm happy to help this is cool back to the system this goes for about like 120 to 150 dollars right now. Totally worth it in my opinion. Just from holding it, you know you got something good. I'm gonna show you the good stuff right away. It reminds you that hey, I have. It's not a, it's not a rumble pack. I keep thinking rumble pack, but it's got like the ability to vibrate. If you want games to use that, you have to mess around with the settings. 351 Elec was the operating system chosen for this. 
It originally comes with, it's a version of Amulek. This is just like a branch of it specifically for this device. I like it. Got a lot of the settings done for you. A lot of the screen settings for this specific device. It's fairly like if you push start, you're going to see the exact menu system that you're used to on Emulek. Let's look at all the systems. So this can, pff, this can emulate so many systems. I think it's around like 51 or something, even, probably even more. It's pretty much when you put the games on here, it'll recognize them in the folders. This SD card is very easy. You pop this in your computer. It's going to open up a directory where all the ROMs are going to be. I put all kinds in here, obviously. So you got Atari 2600, 5200, 7800, uh, CPS1, CPS2, CPS3, ColecoVision, Dreamcast, Game & Watch, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Game Gear, Intellivision, Lynx, MAME, MSX, Neo Geo, Neo Geo Pocket, Nintendo 64. It just keeps going on and on. Nintendo, Beats of Rage, PC Engine, PC Engine CD-ROM with a Turbo Graphics, uh, CD-ROM, PlayStation, PSP, Pokemon Mini, PSP Minis, which was the, uh, the mini games that you could download. Anything possibly that you can throw on a handheld, it's on here. It's available. It'll play. Sega CD, Sega Genesis, Master System, the SG-1000, Super Nintendo, Tick 80 which surprised me. Uh, Turbo Graphics, Super Graphics CD, Vetrix, Virtual Boy, Wonder Swan. I mean, it just goes on and on. So those are the ones that I put ROMs in, but you can, there's even more. There's a lot more. How do these play? How does a Dreamcast play on this, you know? So I'm just going to go through, I'm not going to go through all of them. Obviously, the Ataris are going to work just fine. I'm going to skip those for once. I usually do an Atari game. So I already did scraping of these systems. So screenshots, video of the games are going are gonna to automatically show up. So uh, Capcom Play System 1, 2, 3, ColecoVision, all these are going to work. So, okay, let's, let's start with Dreamcast. Dreamcast is a good test of how well your system's going to work. Dreamcast is one of the harder games to emulate, so let's go for it. So, so far, so far it seems pretty good. That sounds great. So, it feels pretty good, it's, but it does sound choppy. I'm trying to do too many things at once now. I'm doing playing really lousy because I'm not paying attention. So, you can see the frame rates dropping. It was at like 60, now it's at 20. It's still trying. It's playable but oh man i don't know i don't think this is what most people would expect oh i missed it so i don't know so far i'm not getting that loving feeling it's just it's done better than any system that i've than i've uh, tried so far Maybe if you shut off the music or something, but yeah, it's pretty rough. Dreamcast was kind of a fail, but all see all the other ones I'm skipping are fine. Game and Watch is one of the interesting things to emulate. It's pretty much your old LCD. Whoa, almost got hit by a bird. Frames look good so far. We'll keep our eye on it. It seems fine. So this one only works with the D-pad, but um, this that wow, me screwing around, I got my my butt kicked. So um, it only works with the D-pad currently, but that can be adjusted. Screen looks good though; it's not stretching or anything. It's normal. I'm pleased with this. There's no slowdown at all. The Idaho Flasher. We have to go get this guy. Do we really have to? So it looks pretty good, right? For frames aren't dropping. God, I used to love this game. Yeah, I can't. Shows my age, but whatever. Ooh, yeah. 
I just remember when you find the guy, you, if we even get to him, just to rear end him like 80,000 times before he finally pulls over. Which, to be honest, I wouldn't use this sort of vehicle to do that sort of thing. You know, maybe a Humvee would work better. This looks pretty good. Oh, man. No, you don't. Mm. Yeah, it's been a while since I played this. So it works. It works just fine. So it's struggling. You can obviously hear it. The analog stick works here. I, I, I don't know. It's tough to play in slow motion like this. Probably should be easier. Oh, oh man. It's slow motion. Frames are dropping like crazy. It's okay, but, you know, I can't even say that. It's bad. It's okay, you know, frames are fine. Yeah, take that. Frames aren't really dropping. Graphics look good. No complaints. Okay, so if you're a PlayStation guy, I think you're going to be pleased. I've never played this game before, so... I'm kind of embarrassed. So I have no idea what I'm doing. Let me guess. This is some of your handiwork, right? So it plays it like I remember. Doesn't seem too bad. Seems fine to me. Not slow by any means. Oops. Oh great. And this is how you steal a car, everyone. It's that easy. Frames seem fine to me. No issues. It's taking a while to get used to this game again. You just eat all these things and get bigger. But yeah, it's a great, this works great. I'm, I'm pleased for the PSP to be this smooth, this looking this good. I've been a huge supporter of hacking a regular PSP instead of doing this, but I'm changing my mind now because now you can finally emulate PSP without it being brutal. I think I did that well. <laughs> well, if this isn't Bruce Lee, this is nobody. Man. Mm. Take that butterfly. Mm. This is a really weird, cool game. Well, this guy's gonna put up a fight. Mm. Oh man. Not sure what that's about. I never really played the Bonk series too much. There we go. Oh man. It seems to work just fine. Frames aren't dropping. Oh.
It looks a lot like the Neo Geo Bowling. Yeah, it's very choppy, very slow. Overall, we're talking a great system here. You have everything you want, even a vibration option, which I didn't set up for these games, but you know, some people like that. Adds to it. For the car driving game, for the Chase HQ, that probably would have been fun to have. You got Wi-Fi built in, which is great. If you need to download new themes, you need to scrape for some graphics or you know, videos, background stuff, would I recommend this? If you, if you like all these games, if you want all these games in one system, absolutely. Especially this metal one, it's, it's impressive. I know there's other, there's other versions of this. There's like the 351P, that sort of thing. Uh, those are great too. I like this one a lot. It's, it feels like a good quality. The, every, all the buttons feel great. I have no complaints about this thing. It's it's wonderful. I wish it was mine. I really don't want to give it back. It needs a little bit of tweaking. There's different operating systems that you can use for this. Again, I use 351 Elect. There's others, though, that might be more your preference. There, there I think there's like four possible ones you can use. Would I recommend this? Absolutely. I love it. It's a little pricey, but it's still worth it, especially for this particular metal unit. If you're talking plastic, I wouldn't pay so much. But it's got, it's great. And it lasts forever. I've had, so this thing's been fully charged. I've been playing this a lot. I think the battery lasts about like eight hours. And it's been fine. It's only saying it's 50% right now. So good batteries, good feel to it. Everything's great. And that's it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Let's <laughs> go.